Greetings and Happy New Year. This is lay pastor Mary Scheidler from Community Presbyterian Church. The only news for the pews is, of course, the church office will be closed on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. With that, let us begin worship. <laughs> printed in the bulletin. Saving God, the prophet Anna, and the righteous Simeon sang your praise and proclaimed Jesus our Lord to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. Let us who seek redemption in this day prepare our hearts that we may believe the good news of Jesus, receive the light of salvation, and live according to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi, it's time for Children's Chat, and I have my friend Cooper with me today. I'm also sitting in front of my Christmas cactus that has gorgeous flowers on it. And it is still blooming, even though it is no longer Christmas. It's the Sunday after Christmas, and it is uh, the time when we celebrate when Jesus went to the temple to get a special blessing. And some of the words that were spoken at that time were that Jesus grew up in wisdom and knowledge and that God blessed him because he was special. And you are too. And whenever I looked at, at my gorgeous Christmas cactuses and realized how God uh, it blesses us and is with us, I'm thankful for that. And my friend Cooper. So I hope you had a great Christmas. And remember, you are a special child of God, too. And God wants you to be blessed as you grow. Amen. Blessings from Cooper as well. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, 
every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what was stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about Jesus. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul also. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple but worshiped there with fasting and prayer, night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom and the favor of God. Waiting has always been a part of life. When I was a child, I waited for summer vacation. When, is it, when I was in my 30s, I waited for the birth of my child, Wyatt. Today, I wait for the COVID vaccine. When Jesus was just 40 days old, he met two people who had been waiting all their lives. As his parents brought him into the temple courtyard, they met Simeon, a devout old man, who had been waiting to see the Messiah for his whole life. He spent his whole life waiting, praying, listening for God to speak to his heart and watching. Inside the temple, Jesus and his family met 84-year-old Anna, a widow who had spent her entire widowhood in the temple. She too was waiting, praying, listening for God to speak to her heart watching. And in their waiting and praying and listening, they were rewarded. They saw God in human flesh, the one who came to bring life, the one who came to show us what God is really like. And they were able to recognize God in this baby because they had spent their lives waiting, praying, and listening for God to speak. Their hearts were open enough to recognize when God came to them in this particular baby. When Simeon recognized God in the flesh, he prayed this wonderful prayer of thanksgiving, a prayer that has been sung by the church for centuries. We call it the Nunc Dominus, which means permission to depart, and it is sung after receiving communion, the flesh and blood of the same one who came to Simeon and Anna as a baby. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. This lovely prayer of Simeon assures me that God is in our waiting and that God keeps God's promises. So what have you been waiting for?
the COVID vaccine, returning to worship in the sanctuary, being able to gather safely with loved ones. Unfortunately, waiting is demanding. It isn't easy and it might be painful. It will try you and it will test you and it demands patience. And patience means getting in step with God's timing and intentions for our lives, not our own. Anna and Simeon waited their whole lives for a Messiah who would come and free them from Rome's painful rule. But that was not God's intention for the Messiah. And that's the rub about waiting. If things don't go our way, for example, if our ideas of what church should look like don't happen, we want to take our ball and go home. When God doesn't move on our time schedule or the way that we want, we start grumbling and complaining, if not to God, then to each other. We get discouraged and we get tired and we stop praying and listening. Not Anna, not Simeon. All those years praying for a Messiah who didn't come, but they never stopped praying, listening to God, watching for God's presence. And as a result, they saw their prayers fulfilled. If things aren't going well in your life, or if you don't like some of the things that are happening or not happening at your church, don't drop out on God. Waiting is tough. And we need God's help. We also need each other. Sometimes we forget the main purpose of prayer is not to get something from God. When we pray, we invite the presence and the power of God into our lives. And when you do that, you will know that God cares for you and cares for your church and will give light to see God's desires for us and how we can participate in God's purpose. Are you waiting prayerfully, listening, watching for God's presence, God's direction? Please do, because prayerful watching brings rewards. The day came when the Spirit of God moved in Anna and Simeon's hearts, and they knew the wait was over. They saw Jesus in the temple, and they knew that he was the one Simeon stepped forward and fulfilled his role in the drama of the ages as he took Jesus in his arms and blessed him and sang the prayer that is still sung today. Anna the prophet fulfilled God's role for her life. She was the first evangelist, spreading the story of this child to all who longed to hear good news for their lives. Funny thing about prayer, when we wait for God in prayer, Listen to God's word. Watch for God's presence and direction. God molds us into the Christ-like people God intended us to be in the first place. Who knows what blessing God has in store for you, for this church, if we are willing to wait, to pray, to listen, and to be open to the Spirit's breath in our lives. May it be so.
daughters of God and children of the promise, let us pray. Loving God, hear our prayers for all of the nations of this earth that governments and those in authority may protect the vulnerable, shelter the oppressed, and pursue the way of peace for our country and for all places of human interaction and livelihood, that kindness may abound, compassion prevail, and harmony endure as we enter a new year. We pray for the planet Earth, our home, that we may honor her gifts, respect her limitations, and protect her resources. We pray for those in trouble with illness, including Lois, Sid, Sarah, Pat, Elaine, Kathy, Kim, Tim, Mary, Tom, Greg, Kay, and Doug. We pray that they may feel your healing hand for body, mind, and spirit. Let your light shine through each of us and fill the world with the radiance of your love revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord, our light and our Redeemer. Blessing as you led Simeon to embrace the infant Jesus. Guide us, Holy Spirit, by your gracious light that we may welcome your saving word. Reveal to me the salvation that you have prepared for all people. With Jesus Christ, help me to be the light to the nations and a sign of your glorious promise to Israel. Amen. Join me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Christ, through whom we have received adoption as your children. 
With Jesus, our brother, we dedicate ourselves in ministry to the world that we may live as heirs of your promises to the honor and glory of your name. Amen. May God, Redeemer of Israel, dismiss us in peace. May Jesus Christ, Son of God, Son of Mary, uphold us in love. And may the Holy Spirit, the power of God, guide us in truth. Amen.